the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, I greet you in the greetings of peace. As-salamu alaykum. We are here today as a coalition of African American Muslims because we have a unique perspective on bigotry and hatred. See, we're not new to this, we're true to this. We are here today because we recognize that this is the same toxic soup of hatred and bigotry just served in a different level. So we are here today to say that uh, we have something to say. And as David Walker, that great freedom fighter, once said, and we will get heard. Now, first of all, I think that our perspective is unique to understand one way. Uh, as an African American and as a Muslim, I live in a nation where I have to worry about driving while black and flying while Muslim. And, and so we want to say that this is not the climate in which we want to operate, nor will we allow ourselves to operate. How far do we go? Politicians now, and that's where my focus is on the political climate, because what's exacerbating this hatred, what's exacerbating this type of bigotry, this Islamophobia, is also crass politicians who want to sacrifice Muslims on the altar of political expediency, demagoguery, and yes, election 2010. And we said, that dog won't hunt. We just won't allow that to happen because as dignified creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Muslims in America, we said quite clearly to the politicians that second-class citizenship is not an option. Question, what do we say to our children? What do we say to our children about what politicians are doing, Newt Gingrich and uh, Madam uh, uh, Palin and, and others as they continue to compare Muslims to Nazis? Oh, no. And uh, talking about that we are terrorists. Well, we tell our young people and each and everyone else to tell young Muslims, no, you are not a terrorist suspect. You are America's brightest prospect. That's what we tell to our children. And so as we move along, we want to say to the politicians, moving the Islamic Center from, from uh, two blocks from quote unquote ground zero, that's not a real issue. Because if that was a real issue, then why don't we move to uh, say, Brooklyn? She may pay, Imam. They're trying to stop us from building a monster. Is that far enough? Why don't we try moving to Staten Island? Now, that's a good little ways from downtown. You know, I don't know New York that well, but I think that's a good little ways from downtown. But uh, they're organized. These same forces, you know, these same negative forces are organizing there. But why don't we move where Imam Zayn lives? Why don't we move all the way to the West Coast? Well, guess what? 20 minutes outside of San Diego, they're doing the same thing. In Tennessee, Mumbleburg, Tennessee, they're doing the same thing. And not only that, they've been burning the structure. Go ahead. Come on. Now. They've been burning the structure in Mumbleburg, Tennessee. And Gainesville, not Gainesville, Florida, they're talking about burning the Quran on September the 11th. And Jacksonville, Florida, they come up and they placed a pipe bomb while worshipers were in there. And we didn't get anything from the corporate media, no coverage, whatever. Come on. Now. But we don't worry about the, cor the coverage of the corporate media. Because we're covered by something much better. We're covered by a law. On this note, that the so-called politicians, those who are interested in who's going to have the House, who's going to have the Senate, everything is in a law Senate. But I want to make it very, very clear that these politicians are trying to play the people on fake issues. If they really want to do something for this nation, then they should deal with some real issues. How about the economy? How about the fact that we spend billions of dollars dropping smart bombs on dumb missions overseas in Muslim countries?
country. And the fact of the matter is, right here, our schools are coming in the nation's capital and throughout America. How about the fact that we can spend billions of dollars on war, death, and destruction, but people are losing their homes and don't have employment? How about that? Those are real issues. How about the fact that we still have a criminal justice system where the rich get bail and sale, you know, and, the, and the blacks and the Hispanics get jailed and held? How about that? That's a real issue. The disproportionate incarceration of black people. That's a real issue. How, why don't you address that? Oh, oh, if you're so concerned about how to ground it, how come you won't even pass H.R. 947, which is legislation that gives health care to the first responders? You talk about, you, you're concerned about the hollow grounds, and you're concerned about the sensitivity of the people and those who were traumatized on 9-11, and you won't even pass legislation for the firemen and the first responders to give them the type of health care treatment that they require. What a policy. Right. What a policy. So I give the ammunition that Dr. King gave slightly paraphrased. The cobble will ask, is it safe? Vanity in politics will ask, is it popular? But conscience, I may add God conscience, will ask, is it right? And it is right that we Muslims in this country take our rightful place and we are not stepping back for anyone. We're not moving. We're on the move. We're going to collect our forces collectively. As the Imam said, not only with Muslims, but with Christians, with uh, Jewish people, with all people of conscience who want to do good because that's a real issue. Doing good is a real issue. And we're going to unite these voices. We're going to lift these voices. We're not going to be deterred. We're going to continue the struggle by lifting the voices so we will lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven rings. Rings with the harmony of liberty and facing the rising sun. For our new day has begun. Let us march on, dear Muslims, until victory is won. Yes.